Please welcome Hans to the stage. Thanks, Troy. Thank you all. So I'm going to share. How has Excel become my life? <laughs> yeah, that's funny to y'all. All right. So last January, January 2018, I walked into a room and my favorite vocalist was playing, singing, Gal Costa. And I go into this room and there are a hundred Brazilians. And I mean, I feel my eyes welling up, right? Because I am in Sao Paulo, Brazil to teach an hour session on Excel to some Brazilians. I was so appreciative of my life at that point, <laughs> you know, that Excel could be my life in this way. But how did this happen? Well, we go back to my sophomore year in high school where I was living with my father and it was the night when we had to go talk with my algebra teacher about I am struggling. And he suggested that I go to the remedial algebra class. And my father tries all the regular things. What if we get him a tutor? And what if he does more homework? And how are you willing to help him? And give him more quizzes and everything. And the teacher is saying, look, he doesn't have the fundamentals. Um, you know, we could try the extra homework thing but I really think he needs to be in a remedial class. And as we're driving home, my father starts talking about, if you go to the class with the dummies, you better bring me nothing but A's. Because don't you see that white man don't want you in his algebra class? That's what this is about. That white man don't want you there because niggas supposed to be dumb. And he got himself all worked up. And then he started talking about being in the Navy in the 60s and the white boys sabotaging any success he had. And the white boys blaming him for things that he had no part of. The white boys, the white boys, the 60s. And don't you see that white man don't want you in that class? I don't know what to do with this because this feels like it is no longer about me. But I do know I have no clue what's happening in this algebra class. But I don't know how to be this social redemption that he seems to be looking for me to provide for him. But there were a lot of things that were going wrong, and so I wound up going back with my mother, go, went to another high school, and I did the remedial algebra class. And that's why I found I had a knack for it. But the thing was, I had to have things slow down so that I could think and experiment and play and fail without dire consequences. But in that regular class, things just move too damn fast. We're having a quiz every Wednesday morning, every Wednesday morning. Here's a class, quiz, got to get ready for that and fail it again and fail it again. But then in the slower class, I could see this is what we're doing. I got to get these variables separated. I've got to think four steps ahead and think about if I do what I want to do right now, I'm going to get to the end and start having to move around all these huge fractions. But no, let me work on this side and work on this side and think about where I'm going because I know what I need to do. And then it was beautiful. I liked algebra. And I got to second semester calculus because I was able to slow down and think and experiment and fail and learn and keep going. And that's been the foundation for so many things that I've had to learn, whether it's building a website or anything else. I had to slow down, give myself that space to play, experiment, and fail. But years later, I wound up working in a customer service department. 
And people start calling with the same types of questions. And I get, and I start trying to feel, figure these things out, and I wind up in a battle with my supervisor. Because in customer service, I'm supposed to answer the goddamn phones. Right? There's a, they're all queued up, answer the phone, answer the phone, answer the phone. But wait a minute, these people keep calling with the same types of problems. And one problem was these certain clients, they had to take these four courses. And they had to complete them in no less than a year and no more than three years. And people would call up and say, I took my courses. Why did my, my certificate not show up? And in customer service, we're supposed to say, well, I looked at the report, and you're not on the report, and I don't know what's happening, but thank you for calling, and then take the next call. Yeah. But I started digging into the reports. And as this algebra came back to me, being able to look at the data and see patterns and what's tied to what, and getting to a place to where one report led me to an answer that opened up other questions. So now I need another report to get. Right. So my supervisors, I learned later that they wanted to fire me for being difficult. But I was solving problems. And one issue that was coming up constantly was this lady called. She was from the state of Maryland. We didn't report her continuing education to the state. Okay, what's happening? She's on the verge of tears because she is about to lose her professional license. I dig around and run reports and find out she's got six profiles in the system. And her four courses are sprinkled across the six profiles and two different uh, company IDs. So I'm able to figure all of this out over a week, put it all together, and get her reported to her state. And I've learned that everything I did with the data was in service of the people who have to live with the consequences. Because I could have said, this is what the report said. I don't know what more to tell you. You didn't complete the CE. But I can look in the system and see yeah, where's the disconnect? Well, that's somebody else's problem, I could say. I've got calls waiting. I could hang up and take the next call. But no, she has to deal with the consequences of everything I do or don't do. So I constantly went to bat for customers. I had to give a damn about these customers. And we worked with this under this miserable director because he would sit in his office looking at reports, just numbers, data, data, data. We were out there miserable. Now, and it seems like it would be great that he would just immerse himself in all this data. But no, the data was masking all the individuals, the people, and the things that were going wrong. So yeah, answering more calls just meant screwing over more people who had complicated problems. And that's where I was committed. And eventually, he was let go, and we brought in um, another director, Troy, was brought in. And Troy confided in me about 10 years later that he was supposed to fire me when he showed up there because I was difficult. I didn't fit in with the culture. But he saw that I was trying to contribute, that I was making a difference. So he moved me around in different parts of the company, and it always had something to do with the data's fucked up. Something is wrong. One time I was doing commissions. 
I had to calculate commissions for a team of 50 people. And one day, one week, excuse me, I had to calculate the commissions monthly. And one month, I got the report, and his numbers looked weird. They were really low. And I chased that down and realized that the director of billing had written off a whole bunch of bad debts. And that told me, wait a minute, I shouldn't be seeing nine, 10, 20 year old debts. Or they should not be impacting my commissions report. Why are they in here? So now I'm fixing the problem for the salespeople and dealing with the reporting. And I'm able to do this in Excel because Excel is nimble, right? I can get a data dump and work this shit out by myself in my cubicle on behalf of these salespeople who have to deal with the consequences of what I do or don't do. And once I solved that problem about all those old debts being written off, I found out that we owed it people everywhere from 26 cents up to over $5,000. And I saw myself as, you know, this problem solver, right? So when the, this massive layoff came, when they laid off all 300 of us and moved the company from Chicago to La Crosse, Wisconsin, I didn't even have Excel on my resume. Somebody else had to tell me, Excel is a skill and you're good at it. Yeah. I just saw myself as a guy solving problems. But okay, so I put, my my, I put Excel on my resume. And that, then the layoff came, and I had a severance package that didn't have me. I didn't feel a pressure to go get another job, but I had time to figure out what I'm going to do. And again, I'm thinking, should I get a project management certification? What, what, where should I go with this now? People start calling, asking me for Excel training, Excel tutoring, building things in Excel, building apps. I built an app for a, a photographer. That was my first paid gig in Excel. And then there was a chef. She needed something. She says, Oz, I go to the grocery store. She's a personal chef, right? So she makes these meals for all these different people. And she says she makes her week's list, and then she goes to the grocery store, and she buys her garlic and her meat and everything else. Now, a problem is she needs a quarter tablespoon of minced garlic. She needs a half cup, half cup over here, third of a cup over here, two tablespoons over here. How much fucking garlic do I need to get through the week? I don't know. Every time she adds all this stuff up, a quarter of a teaspoon, a half a cup, a third of a cup, a third of a cup, and a half of a cup, and a quarter of a teaspoon, and a half a teaspoon, and a half cup, and a quarter. And it's just like, ah! So I built for her an app that will tell her these are the groceries that you need when you go to the store to get you through the week. So many over the years that that layoff happened in 2008 and I've seen so many different uses for Excel because it is nimble and even people who want to build a prototype in Excel and then turn it over to developers to turn into a standalone app. They've used Excel for that. Um, but eventually I started I made my own YouTube channel. And I started having fun with it, and you should check it out. It's Excel on Fire. It's a lot of fun. Yes, because Excel can be fun. You know it. You got this fun socks there. Right. Right. And uh, so I put fire and skeletons and tell stories in my YouTube channel. And somebody from LinkedIn contacted me. She, so now I've got several courses on their platform. And all it, you know, and I kept trying to get away from Excel, but it kept pulling me back in some way. And then I was asked, would you come to Brazil? And I said, hell yeah. 
hell yes, I will come to Brazil. And so all of that has led to now I'm going to uh, um, Amsterdam in about two weeks and then four cities in Australia in July. And it really goes back to this couple of things is how do I learn? I've got to slow down and play and experiment and fail where there are no dire consequences and then learn from that and keep moving. And then there is always giving a damn, always caring about the people who have to live with the consequences of what I do or don't do.